In this lecture, we want to continue on the discussion of uh, metallic crystal structures. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, face-centered cubic uh, structures, as well as some metrics that we use to describe um, these uh, crystalline properties. Okay, We're going to talk today about body-centered cubic and hexagonal closed-packed structures. We'll start with the hexagonal closed-packed structure, or HCP as, it, as we call it. And it's a non-cubic crystal structure, and it's created by stacking closed pack planes in an alternating A, B, A, B, A, B fashion. Okay? Now, you might be thinking, wait a second, didn't we just talk about FCC um, being a, a stacking of closed pack planes? And, and it is. So let me explain the difference. So what I'm showing you here on the bottom is is a, an HCP structure. So think of this these green atoms as layer A and the blue atoms here as layer B. And so the structure is comprised by, by laying down the A layer, laying down the B layer, and then just alternating A, B, A, B. What you see we don't do, so if you see this location right here where my cursor is, this location and that location, those would be the, the C um, layer locations uh, if they existed. And in the case of hexagonal closed pack, they never they never go to that location. So that's that's what distinguishes them from the FCC. Um, and so we end up with a structure that doesn't look cubic, rather it looks hexagonal and it looks just like stacking of closed pack planes where we just stagger one and then move it back and then stagger and then move it back. Uh, uh, the, it's characterized by the distance between the atoms and the closed pack plane as well as the height between uh, the two A layers in the closed pack plane. So the only difference then between FCC and HCP is the stacking sequence. Okay, um, that should tell us something because the stacking sequence uh, is is the only difference. They shouldn't pack any differently, and so in fact they have the same atomic packing factor, which we computed for the FCC material uh, was 0.74, and they also have the same coordination number, which was 12, same as the FCC. Some examples of this uh, of metals that take on this structure would be magnesium, titanium, zinc, cadmium, and beryllium. Uh, this isn't an exhaustive list, but they're some of the more common uh, metals that you may have heard of or worked with. So it's a distinct, distinctly different structure because it's not cubic, okay? Uh, and in the case where everything is stacked as tightly as possible from layer to layer, uh, this C over A ratio, the, that, that uh, those dimensions can be computed. So the, in the ideal case, C over A is uh, 1.633. Okay, so let's move on now and talk about the body-centered cubic structure. Okay, in a body-centered cubic, uh, if you remember, we talked about FCC being stacking of closed pack planes. You could think of BCC or body-centered cubic as the stacking of the square packed planes. And they result, what, what happens is it results in atoms that are at the corner of the cube and then one atom in the center. So I'm showing you both the hard sphere model here uh, as, well as, the, um, as well as the reduced sphere model. And what you can see is that uh, unlike in the FCC uh, case, the atoms at the corner don't touch. They only touch across, you know, this corner touches the center atom when, and that center atom touches this corner. So that's a slight difference, uh, uh, and then it, it's again pretty easy just to visualize. So, uh, but what you can also see is that they're formed from non-closed pack layers. So we would expect that the atomic packing factor is going to be a little bit lower, right? And we're going to compute that uh, in the next slide. In terms of the coordination number, it's actually very easy to compute. So if you look at um, the coordination number, let's just take the center atom, right? It's not touching atoms inside other cells. It's only touching the corner atoms. There are eight corner atoms, so the coordination number for BCC is eight. And uh, this is also a very common structure. Uh, it's the structure of iron, at least alpha iron, which is uh, we'll talk more about when we talk about different phases of, of iron and, and, and steel as well. It's uh, also found in tantalum, found in tungsten, chromium, and molybdenum. So those, uh, that sort of is, it introduces the idea of the BCC structure and where you can find it. So now let's go ahead and compute the atomic packing factor of BCC. 
And remember, we're going to go into this hoping that we get something less than 0.74 because we know that we're not using closed pack planes. So let's go through the same procedure as before. Step one is that we want to determine the number of atoms in the unit cell. So how do we do that? Well, th this part is the same as the FCC. There's, there's an atom at each corner, and each of those atoms, uh, there's really an eighth that's inside the unit cell. So uh, each corner atom contributes one eighth of an atom to the unit cell. And then there's a center atom that's fully in the unit cell. Uh, that will be uh, c contribute one atom to the unit cell. So we have one center atom plus eight corner atoms at an eighth apiece gives us two atoms in our unit cell. Okay, how about step two? And that's just to develop the relationship between the cell length and the radius of the atoms. And we have a cell length of A, so that means we're going to have a volume of the unit cell of A cubed. Um, now we want to relate that to the radius of the atoms. And we already said in the previous um, slide that the atoms only touch along the diagonals of the cube. And so that diagonal... Uh, has a value just from, from your uh, geometry class of a times the square root of 3. And we also know that the um, that distance a square root of 3 must be equal to 4 times the atomic radius, right? We get one radius from each corner and then two radius values from the, the center atom. So we have a root 3 equals 4r. We solve for a and find that a is equal to 4r over root 3. And now we're ready to go ahead and compute the atomic packing factor. Okay, so the, this is the final step. The atomic packing factor, is, remember, is just the volume of the atoms in the unit cell divided by the volume of the unit cell. So we have two atoms times uh, their volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed uh, per atom. And then obviously the volume of the unit cell, because it's a cube, is just a cubed. So we make our substitutions that and, and find that the atomic packing factor is uh, 0.6802 for BCC. Um, and, and so we, we sort of do a gut check and, and remember that uh, that's compared to 0.74 um, for an FCC and for HCP. And so we see it's slightly less, uh, which is what we expect, right? It's not quite as closed packed, so we expect the, the packing density to be a little less. That's what we found, so it's not a proof that that's correct, but it certainly uh, matches with what we would expect. So now, now you basically have... Uh, hopefully a handle on the, the three primary uh, structures that we're going to observe in metallic materials and that we'll talk about in this class. And primarily in this class, actually, we're going to focus on the BCC and FCP and, and FCC rather. And, um, and I just want you to be aware of the HCP because um, I might make reference to it uh, periodically. But the two primary ones we're going to focus on are BCC and FCC. So... Hopefully that's uh, straightforward. We're going to move on uh, now after this lecture to talk about um, uh, very specific ways to identify features of the unit cells, points, directions, planes, those kinds of things.